just like the pathologists have a structured way of uh, documenting their reports, do we need to actually follow a structured system of reporting so that we can communicate our findings better and at the same time make sure we keep ourselves medically legally safe. I'm just going to uh, run down on a few ways in which we can actually have a structured way of reporting reviewing a couple of the journals that have come in the American Journal of Radiology. Why is it important? A radiologist is usually identified by the reports he writes. It's your own product and it is your own identity. The important chug in the diagnosis and treatment of the patient, you directly are responsible for patient care. And more importantly, because it is a document that you are putting down on paper with a signature on it, it is of utmost importance that you get it right. Uh, referring physician uh, gets the maximum utility if you are able to convey the report in a manner in which he can comprehend. So what are the components of a good report? One, the demographics, the history, comparison studies, findings or the body of the report, the impression or the conclusion, your final verdict on what is your conclusion at the end of your study. Demographics can be broadly uh, consisting of the name of the patient, the age, the sex, the details of the referring physician, the date and the time of the study, and the title of the study. Usually most of the radiology information system or the RIS tend to contain these details already entered by default. If not, you need to make sure that all of these are documented appropriately. Preferably even time of the study would be ideal. Out of these, usually the variables that tend to exist are the title of the study and the technique of the study, which uh, tends to vary depending on what type of study you are doing. So uh, a broad study that can be labeled as a CT abdomen with or without contrast pertaining to the study that you're doing, you can be more specific in the title you give to your reports. If uh, 
A urologist is sent for a specific evaluation of the kidneys, ureters, and bladders. A non-enhanced CT of the abdomen. Uh, a direct uh, heading can be placed, stating it as a painkiller urine. Also, if a focal level lesion has been sent for evaluation using triphasic CT, as it is, and so forth. In CT chest, if an HRCT chest is done, you can specify it. If only an angiogram is done, you can specify it as it is. Sometimes many studies are coupled together in a single short study itself, so it might be a better idea to give a common heading if you are planning to incorporate both reports together in a single report. The technique of the study. It's important to convey across what exactly you did, how you did it, what did you administer, what are the routes in which you administered, what are the phases you acquired. Did you take an arterial phase, portovenous phase, or delayed phase? Did you do any additional use or any new type of positioning pertaining to the particular case? Did you do an expiratory CT, an inspiratory CT? Did you do a prone CT, etc.? As far as the MRI is concerned, you need to document the sequences that you're taking, the phases that you have acquired, and if you're doing, uh, for example, a study of the pituitary, and you, in fact, also did a spinning of the brain, so it might be specific, uh, uh, might be better to put it in such a way that you actually uh, specify the sequences that you have done separately for the pituitary and for the spinning of the brain. History is the clinical details or the clinical information that is provided to us prior to doing the examination. So it is important to keep it documented. So because that is not the information that we have found, since it is something that has come, try to keep it short. Document it because it is necessary for reimbursement for insurance companies. And if in your header already the age and the sex of the patient has been revealed, do not repeat it again. If pertinent history is not provided, you usually tend to be in a diagnostic dilemma and especially it makes it even more difficult for you to decide on what exact technique of study you need to administer. Uh, so it's important for, uh, from a medical legal point of view to specify what exactly was the clinical history provided to you. And it also sends a subtle message to the ordinary physician on uh, do you actually uh, uh, provide enough information or not? If so, probably you should be doing more. And uh, if you are having a diagnostic uncertainty at the end of the study, probably the lack of history might be one of the reasons.
ideally compare images and not reports if you have always have a previous study please compare the uh, uh, images and uh, make sure you document the date of the previous study and uh, there is a preference to use statements regarding comparison towards the end of your report after documenting your findings so that the person who is reading your report can have a uh, idea of what exactly are the change, newly developed changes that have appeared. The body or the bulk of the report uh, would be probably occupying around 70 to 80 percent of your documentation and this is the part where you need to be really careful so how can you make it look good and at the same time provide the relevant information across to the clinician a good report should be concise clear and pertinent to the question that is raised Avoid beginning sentences with there is, there are. So if you have a focal deviation, there's no need to start with there is a focal uh, well-defined lesion in segment 6 of liver. Rather, you can straight away go with a well-defined focal liver lesion in segment 6 of liver. Avoid redundant words and phrases. Words and phrases which do not contribute to any information in the report, like review of the scan and bone window shows no metastatic disease. Uh, rather than that, you can simply say there is no bone metastasis. It is understood that you had reviewed the images in a bone window. Use unremarkable or normal instead of long winding phrases. Why this is significant is because if the clinicians, uh, question that the clinician is raising, for example, in a non enhanced CT of the abdomen, uh, if his primary concern is, is there any calculi in the urinary tract, um, there is no point in discussing in detail about other organs like the liver, uh, whether there's a focal liver lesion or if the periodic duct is normal in size. Uh, yeah, because as it is non enhanced of the abdomen we provide limited information on the rest of the organs so uh, you can broadly use statements like liver is grossly unremarkable etc here there is a for and an against as far as narrative versus concise sentences are concerned you can either go for uh, uh, a descript large descriptive content uh, 
using your uh, vocabulary or you could go to specific concise sentences now example of how concise sentences are being used lately is for example the virus the be uh, breast imaging and reporting system wherein uh, uh, concise terminologies are used for grading uh, different pathologies or stages of uh, involvement of the breast uh, so that the message that is conveyed across uh, to the clinician is much more clearer and standardized so words that do not serve any function should be avoided Use of acronyms and abbreviations are not recommended because standard acronyms and abbreviations are very limited and use of uh, terminologies which uh, are difficult to comprehend to the person reading the report, even your own colleagues as well as the physicians will be best avoided. Preferably use the term reporting in the present tense. Why this is important? Even though the study has been done a few a while ago, a few hours or a few minutes ago, it, it, you consider this as the present study and always use the previous studies as the past study for comparison. Certain terminologies should be used with care. Overuse of the word evidence of or the phrase evidence of should be preferably avoided. Now, the, for example, in the case of portal hypertension, portal hypertension is a, a, a pathology that cannot be measured using an imaging modality. However, uh, estimating the direct pressure is a direct indicator of whether there is portal hypertension. However, what we do in uh, radiology is look for indirect evidences uh, which uh, collate to or point towards a possibility of a portal hypertension. So, uh, use of evidence of portal hypertension as a conclusion makes sense. But pleural occlusion, for example, is a finding that is observed in the imaging and can be documented as it is. So, there is no indirect evidences. In fact, we are directly visualizing the plural effusion. So, evidence of plural effusion should be avoided. Significant lymph adenopathy. Some authors argue that lymph adenopathy per se is abnormal enlargement of the lymph nodes. So, there is no use of the term significant lymph adenopathy because there is no such thing as non-significant lymph adenopathy.
Double negatives are also called hedging. You should not be using double negatives in your reports because uh, it conveys uh, neither any useful information to the physician nor any conclusion at all. So it's just a double winding statement which has no end product. Again, term non-specific terminologies like non-specific bowel gas pattern should be avoided. If a small bowel appears dilated and you feel that there might be a distal obstruction, be it partial or complete, it might be better to suggest it directly. The physician should be able to mentally visualize the critical findings that you are conveying across. So what you need to do is uh, the size of lymph node which you document, for example, should be put in such a way that the significance of that enlarged lymph node should be conveyed across. So there's no point writing measurements of all the lymph nodes you see uh, in any other region if they are of no significance. non quantified data is something that is subjective because over a period of time, based on your experience, you tend to give different uh, uh, expressions on it because you just cannot quantify it. So, with experience, you keep on using descriptive qualitative terms like mild, moderate, and severe. For the specific clinical question that is a case, you need to uh, provide the relevant negatives. Now, uh, if a patient is present, for example, with jaundice, and uh, the clinical picture is of an obstructive jaundice, you will need to document evidences of if there is an intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation. You need to document about what is happening with the CVD, what is happening with the pancreatic duct, what is happening with the uh, ampulla vita, is there a mass lesion in the head region of the pancreas, is there any local region of lymph nodopathy, extrinsic compression, neural thickening, etc. So all those positives and negatives have to be included together. And if a specific symptom is asked, try to keep the relevant findings together and an incidental finding should be kept towards the end of the report. Quite a uh, number of times you would be encountering situations where you will be having non-specific or equivocal findings. So uh, in those situations, it would be ideal if you could guide the physician to 
the next line of investigation that might uh, help him in uh, narrowing down the differentials or coming to a diagnosis. More than offering more than four differential diagnoses is not a good idea because it does not help the physician in any manner. So try to avoid it. Clinically indicated is a term which uh, clinicians do not uh, uh, appreciate. A clinical correlation is suggested is a, a good way to uh, put it at the same time, uh, especially if you want specific uh, lab uh, or investigation correlations to be done. You can specify it, uh, be it like urine routine microscopy or a liver function test or a retinal function test, etc. Documenting findings that have been detected in the, detected or not detected in the previous study should be, uh, the, the wording of those uh, term, uh, sentences should be put in such a way that you do not put the previous radiologist in a difficult position. But at the same time, you need to um, compare the two uh, findings and at the same time make a call on whether there is any morphological change, is it of any significance and convey the message in the new report. So wording the report should be done in such a way that you do not, do not put the previous reporting radiologist in a bad light. Too small to characterize is a term we often encounter in reports. Uh, however, if uh, using the modality which you are, if you are unable to characterize the lesion, uh, availability of previous uh, imaging, if any, might be able to um, give you an idea if the lesion is actually progressing in size or remaining static. The impression or the conclusion of your report should always answer the clinical pertinent question that has been raised. It should be concise and precise. Do not go on repeating whatever paragraphs you have documented in the body of your report. Uh, preferably document the findings of or your conclusion in the order of importance. Avoid descriptions which do not lead to a conclusion. A description may be used if you are having equivocal findings and you would like to suggest it uh, for the line of investigation or follow-up. So uh, these are a few guidelines which uh, 